This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. Good morning. Ain't it a great morning outside? I mean, it's going to rain, but that's what we like because we've planted stuff that needs some water. Hey, y'all, I'm Horticulture's Felder Rushing and uh, the the host of the Gestalt Gardener, me and Java Chapman, my awesome producer. We've been on the road and we're going to be coming back uh, just a few minutes after a little bit of news and talk with you about what's going on or not in your garden. Here it is, uh, April, a lot of weirdness going on, a lot of stuff still left over for winter damage, a lot of hope. People are planting stuff. There's interesting things you're uncovering in the garden, some of which you may not really like that much. But if you've got anything you'd like to talk about that's related to gardening, indoors or out, lawn care, vegetables, does not matter. We're going to talk about it, uh, me and Java and and uh, all the folks at MPB, Kevin Farrell's in there. He's our phone greeter today. <laughs> Love a new title for. Uh, we're going to be talking about gardening, and if you've got anything on your mind, bring it on. Bring it on. I don't try to sell you anything, but if there's something I can help you with that needs a product or doesn't need a product, or is a product really not that good an idea, or something you hadn't thought about. Uh, I'm retired extension horticulturist. I don't try to sell anything. I just try to keep it to the facts the best I can, but I, I, I ameliorated a little bit with having been a pretty good good, solid, average gardener with failures and successes like everybody else. Wasp stings on my hand. <laughs> and we can talk about it. Uh, Java, how you doing this morning, man? Oh, man, I'm doing good. A um, little bit of the rain, but you know, hey, right. it is what it is. And rain is good. Well, unless you're a farmer and ain't got it all in yet. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I got a whole lot, lot of stuff planted this past week and, you know, doing stuff. And so I could use good rain. Good, yeah, good and you came in here with a little uh, peculiar, I guess I can say wound, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> this yeah. morning. Yeah, I was up on my roof fixing a hole, you know, uh, fixing a hole. It sounded like a Beatles song or something, fixing a hole in the roof. Um, and while I was up there, I was buying them on, I was scrubbing a little spot because it's a tin roof and making it shiny. He's going to put this Flex Seal stuff on it and and uh, and all that. And a wasp out that came from you know, yards away and said, I don't think you're supposed to be up here, son. And it, st- I mean, it hit me hard on my hand. I almost jumped out of the, it looked like one of those cartoon characters that, you know, explodes and comes back together. Yeah. Uh, but it's all nice and puffy. And, you know, when you're an old guy like me, Java, an itchy hand, that's kind of like a buzz. And we like to get them wherever we can find them. <laughs> 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 we do have a whole lot of stuff to talk about, though, uh, interesting stuff. Uh, but mostly it's about you. What do you want to c- call and talk about that's going on? your garden and i brought in a few things to talk about a couple of things to share and uh the the answer to question nobody really asked but let's start out right right off the bat going as far north as we can in mississippi to south haven good morning rebecca how are you good morning felder i've got a question for you i haven't heard anybody ask on here okay but um asparagus yeah i'll tell you why i'm asking one of my buddies three years ago was in lowe's and they had the asparagus marked down, and she looked it up, said it needed full sun, and she planted it by her gas meter because that's the only place she had full sun. Okay. And this year, <clears throat> this year she's eating it every day. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I was here three years ago. I could have done that. Um, <laughs> is it that easy? It's, well, it's the three years to, to trick to it, right? Well, it's it really not. Asparagus is. It's pretty easy to grow. Matter of fact, I grow a, a plant called asparagus fern. You've probably seen that in hanging baskets in my garden. It comes back even after this winter, and it is an asparagus. If you look, it is an asparagus. Here's the deal, though. The further north you go, the better it grows. It doesn't really like our hot, humid uh, summers. It really doesn't like uh, our real fickle winters. It wants to get cold and stay cold. Um, and not only that, but because of all of the heavy rain, it can rot real easy because it's sort of like monkey grass. It, as a matter of fact, the same family as monkey grass. If you if you bury it too deep like they do up north, it'll rot here. So if she worked it up and got pretty good drain soil and didn't plant it too deep and cover it with mulch, it'll do fine. It'll do fine. She said she can eat it every day until it gets hot. And then yeah. she'll do it again next year. I mean, you don't have to plant it again next year. No, it's just like it's, eat it's, again next year. It's, it's like eating the leaves off a of monkey grass. You know, monkey grass puts up all its leaves mostly in the spring and just sort of sits there the, the rest of the year. 
And uh, same but thing. If it does as well. If it does as well as monkey grass, then no, I no, 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 no. I didn't say as well. I said sort of like. It, gr- okay. it it grows like monkey grass. It's a clump of stuff, sends up leaves, uh, in, mostly in the spring. It stops, and all those leaves toughen up, and they stay there till the next It doesn't keep putting on leaves all summer is what I'm saying. So like monkey grass, puts up all its leaves in the spring, early summer. And the difference is with asparagus, we eat some of the leaves, and we leave some to feed the plant. She needs to leave some, or else the plant's not going to be able to feed itself and make more for next year. So she needs to stop. After she's had her fill. Does that uh-huh. make sense? So, now, monkey grass is a bulb. It's nope, a lily. Nope. Right. Yeah, but it's, a, but it's not a bulb. It's a lily. But, uh, you know, not all bul- not all lilies are bulb. Monkey grass is a... Is, is a pr- you know how day lilies grow? Yes. Same thing. Have them Same. Yeah, they got, they got crowns, not bulbs. So, anyway, the bottom line is, if you don't plant it too deep... And you mulch it really well to keep its roots cool in our hot summertime, and you leave some of the leaves alone at a certain point so it can can feed itself and grow. It does fine, not as well as up north, but it does fine. You know, when, when I'm in England, I walk across a field of asparagus, as far as you can see, rows of asparagus, and they come, they, they harvest it, leave it alone the rest of the year. Next year, they got all they can dig. Damn. All right. Uh, the the trick is the two or three years it takes to make. That's, uh, unless that's you, well, she bought some small plants to begin with. You can buy ready to go grow plants, but it's just like monkey grass, you plant a little clump of monkey grass, it's going to sit there the first year. Next year it gets bigger. Next year it gets bigger. Same. It grows just like monkey grass. That's what I'm saying. And you know, right at first it doesn't look like much, but it gets a little bigger every year. Same thing. So main so thing it's is just patience. It yeah. should be the definition of slow gardening. Hey, well, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it, it, this engine, slow gardening doesn't mean taking your time. It means savoring what you do. And if you can grow asparagus, okay. if you only get one or two spears a year, you're going to feel a whole lot better about yourself. And asparagus, it's okay. a pretty fur. But when it, after a while, she needs to stop harvesting it, leave some of those things as tall, fern-looking things, because that sends energy down for next year's crop. In other words, don't use up all of her, all of her gas. All right. all right. All right. Thank you very much. You bet. Appreciate it. <clears throat> oh, asparagus. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Plant. By the way, there are different kinds of asparagus, just like there are different kinds of tomatoes. And if you want the best of it, you need to look for varieties. You know, do a little research ahead of time. Don't just get what they're what, throwing away at Lowe's. Uh, but there are varieties that are male. They don't make the little flowers and the berries, so they make more spears. Just a stupid thing to know. Hey, let's slide up just north of the state line to Memphis uh, and talk to Wilma. Wilma, how are you this morning? Good morning. Howdy. I've got three oak trees in the yard. Uh-huh. I have got numerous baby oak trees growing in my bed. About 90% of the ones I try to pull up end up breaking off. What's going to happen? Are they going to just die or are they going to send up new leaves? I, I have this same problem, and sometimes uh, they break off and, and they die, but sometimes they sprout back out. When you go to pull them the next year, the parts that you're pulling that grew this year are hooked to a stump that, you know, gets bigger every year. So what I do is I, I've, I've got a, it's like a, a long screwdriver, and what I do is I reach down, I push down in the bottom with the, down beside it, and I pull and I pry at the same time. They pop right out. A whole lot easier than pulling. They just pry them out. But uh, some, okay. some, some are going to sprout back out if, you, if they break off. Okay, great. Thank you. I never thought of that. All right, yeah, a little, little, little problem. Bar. Pulling and, and, and prying a whole lot easier on the back and the hand, too. <laughs> okay, thank you. You bet. Pre- appreciate it. Man, we got the, the phones lined up this, this morning, Java. Let's go now to Wilkerson County and talk to Larry. Larry, how are you this morning? Great. How you doing? So far, so good. I got a magnolia flower in here. It's about to run me out of here. It's so sweet smelling. It's like a gardenia. Yes, I love them. Yes, I love them. And man, I love your show too. <laughs> well, good. Well, thanks for being part of it. What you got going on this morning? Oh, look, I I'm Native American. I'm Choctaw, and uh, you know, uh, I've got some wild persimmon trees I got go- growing in my yard. I picked up the seeds down in a swamp a few years ago uh-huh. hunting, and I got them going, and they're getting on up, 
And uh, last year, I was sitting here on my porch, and I seen a main, a main growth of the tree. It just fell off. I got up and I walked out there and I looked, and there was a worm. He done cut all the way around and killed it. And I'm like, what in the world? And so I put seven dust in it, and it ain't deterred some of the bugs crawling up in those persimmon trees. Yeah. And and I'm thinking, do I have to put aluminum foil around the base, or what do I do to keep those things out of there from cutting my trees like that? Well, I'm I'm gonna have to make an educated guess about what it is. There's a type of beetle that's called a twig girdler. And what it does is it climbs up the trees, and it's a, it's a kind of pretty bit long, little long skinny beetle about half the size of your your little finger. And what it does is it lays eggs in 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 in, in branches and twigs and stuff, and then it chews around and around and around until it girdles it, and that part breaks off, falls to the ground, and that puts the eggs and the larvae down close to the ground. It's a weird way to make a living, but that's what they do. And not a really good way to deter it, though, you know. But you, you say you got a pretty good number of, uh, of trees out there, right? Right. Yeah, so, you know, there's not anything practical you can do. it. You can't really spray a tree. Seven dust and insecticides, they're designed to not last more than a few hours or a couple of three days, and then they're gone. So if you put it on today, next week it's gone, and the critters can come back then. So you'd have to be out there spraying and treating all the time. What I would do is I'd just, just pick up, you know, get the persimmons you can, and just, you know, be grateful for the largesse. Yeah, well, they're not they're not producing yet. They're still young, yeah. and I'm just then there, I see these little specks on some of the leaves. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah don't don't yeah. You're looking too close now. There's lots of little fungi and, and that leave spots on leaves and roses and persimmons and all sorts and oak trees. They all have these little spots and stuff. Nothing practical you could do about that. So what I would do is I'd just get back on the porch and sit back and relax and and enjoy what a pretty day it's going to be because there ain't squat you can do about these kind of problems on trees. I, I wish there there was, but there there's really okay. not. Well, I'm going to get some more seeds this winter and uh, try to plant some more and give them out to other people. <laughs> All right, man, look, I love you, show. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for being part of it. <clears throat> All right. And uh, Java, here's a here's a question he didn't ask with an answer to it. Persimmons that grow from seed are separate male or female trees, and you can't tell for six, seven, eight years till they mature whether you got males or females or which ones are which. So uh, that's the reason I recommend people plant the Japanese persimmons, the Asian type persimmons. They're big, they're pretty, they're ornamental, and uh, one tree will have all the all the persimmons that you could possibly eat. Just one of those stupid things to know. <laughs> so, well, that's, that, that was pretty good. That was yeah. pretty good. Let's let, go back to Jackson. Is this Jackson caller from Jackson? Hello. Hello. Good morning. I have a question on a nectarine tree that I that my that my that get, we got from my show. Gotcha. What's the question? Still won't give. It still won't give any fruit. Yeah, well, a nectarine. It's re- all a nectarine is is a peach with no fuzz. There's no difference between a nectarine and a peach except the nectarine is smooth and a f- peach is fuzzy. Most of them need two different varieties to cross-pollinate each other. Most pe- Not all peaches do, but peaches and plums and apples and pears a lot of times need two different varieties for either one of them to set fruit. So I suspect you just have one that's just, it's just lonesome. It needs another variety. And a peach will pollinate a nectarine. See, so if you get your little peach tree and put it near the nectarine, they'll both do a whole lot better. Does that help? Okay, so we need to get another tree. A, another, a different variety, not a same, not not another one of the same tree. Two different varieties, either two different nectarines or a nectarine and a peach. That'll help. All righty. Thank you. Okay, appreciate your call. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on out there, Java. A lot of people have questions. That was interesting how you said you need a different a different kind of variety yeah. to help. Yeah. And it's, it's just, you know, some plants will produce all by themselves. Matter of fact, I brought a peach in there. Did Jason bring a knife? Don't tell nobody. <laughs> okay. This is, a, this is a peach. It's an old heirloom peach called Indian Kling. A Kling because the, the, uh, the, the seed in there sticks inside the fruit. It clings to it. But it's self-fertile. It blooms early. They're small. They're hard. They're great for pickling, but they taste okay. This one fr- bloomed 
and has already fruited in spite of last December's freeze. Old-fashioned variety called Indian Cling, been grown in North America since the Spaniards introduced it in the 1600s, and it'll grow from seeds. So, horticulturist fellow rushing in uh, Java. We, you know, last week we broadcast live from Clarksdale from the Juke Joint Festival. That was kind of wild. And it doesn't feel like a week. It, like that was I, last I, Friday. I like, know. Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. It was, uh, and, and it was from the. Uh, and I keep saying cooperative. But because it's it not. means the same thing. It was, a, it was the collective seat. The seat. collective seat. It used to be Miss Dale. As a matter of fact, way up high on the side of the building, right downtown Clarksdale, it says Miss Dale's. Yeah, you can still see it, that, that, that yeah. painting. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. Real folks coming out. You know, folks who don't have much in common with each other except gardening or plants or flowers and stuff like that. We had every possible kind of human being there. And we had had a lot of fun. Some stuff I forgot to mention while we were there, but we still had had. A, a pretty good time. Uh, I did. One of the guys who came though gave me some. He's a rice grower, and he brought me some different kind of rice. <clears throat> Excuse me, but one of them is a bag of rice grits, and I'm just not sure about that. First of all, grits ain't rice. <laughs> so I'm not sure how to cook rice grits, or whether you put butter on them. Or sugar, or you know, different ways to eat grits. I don't know. Do well, you, you should never, you should never put sugar on grits. Just <laughs> point blank, period. Um, but you're one of those. <laughs> but the rice grits are. I, I mean, you should have asked this question on uh, Monday when you were on Deep South Dining. Oh, I had so much fun on Deep South. <laughs> I had so much fun with that. But yeah, but I could call them in Monday. I could call in Monday on Deep South Dining. You could because rice grits. They are. It is a grit. It's just a different type of. Okay, so grit. so grit just means chopped up stuff. Yeah. So you you would probably cook it like grits, and like I said, do not put sugar on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually put butter and a little milk and sugar on mine, but we're going to get along, Java. It's a weird world. <laughs> we're going to get along, brother. But uh, anyway, uh, wh- while I was there uh, that evening, also the, the next day, I stayed overnight. Next day, I uh, had this, this fellow who's, who's had opened up a brewery right next to Miss Dell's, but he had root beer and ginger beer, which are non-alcoholic. Root beer and ginger beer brewed in Mississippi, besides Barks. He so, brewed the ginger beer? Yeah. I yeah. love a good ginger beer. But Java, I've got three events coming up. Next week is, is National Library Week. And, uh, you know, all the libraries encouraging people who normally don't go to libraries and haven't been there for a while to come in and check out what they've got, the displays and the new way of doing things. And I'm giving three talks in libraries around Mississippi this week, uh, this next week. Uh, one is on uh, the 26th, which is Tuesday at noon. I'm going to be at the Winona Library. Um uh, let me see. No, no, no. We're going to back it up. Louisville on the 25th. That's Tuesday. Louisville Library, um, and it's going to be at 1130. It's going to be a noontime talk in Louisville at the library on Tuesday. That same day, I'm going to slide down to Carthage at the Leak County Library, and we're going to do a plant swap and a talk at 3 o'clock. So Louisville at noon on Tuesday at the library, <clears throat> and then uh, Carthage Library at 3 o'clock, plant swap and a little talk. And then on the uh, uh, the 26th, I'm doing a talk in Winona at the library. Uh, Winona. So anyway, a lot of stuff going on. Love yakking with folks because, again, this is a egalitarian group. It's not horticulturists. It's not garden club. There are some horticulture, are some garden clubs, are some master gardeners, but it's mostly garden variety gardeners who a lot of times are non-joiners, just want to get together and yak, and that's what we're going to do. So uh, I had an interesting thing last night, Java, in the middle of the night, heard a screech, womp, mew. Any idea what that would be? A bad sequence of events for somebody. <laughs> uh, apparently a, a raccoon, probably a baby raccoon, was walking across my tin roof and slid down. And I heard its 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 <laughs> its uh, claws all the way, <laughs> and it went, mew, poor me. <laughs> Middle, and after a while, I heard, I was going to go out and check it out, but I heard some stirring. So anyway, a little baby raccoon slid off my roof. Only in, well, not only in Mississippi, but only on the Gestalt Garden. We're going to talk about stuff like that. There you go. And uh, uh, 
Uh, do you you have the information? Master Gardeners in Rankin County having a plant sale. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, Rankin, yeah, Rankin County Master Gardeners. Um, it's a rain or shine event because I'm not sure what the weather is tomorrow, but it's raining right now. But um, it's supposed and, to be nice. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow. Okay, so at the Rankin County um, Extension Building, six hundred one Marquette Road. Um, 8 a.m. until noon, they got a lot of things, um, you know, good old-fashioned plant sale, um, pass along plants, herbs and succulents and perennials and house plants. It's all going to be there um, tomorrow, uh, Rankin County Extension Building. Uh, and the uh, the Heinz County Group is having theirs next weekend at Monel Gardens. So a lot of master, a lot of, a lot of plant sales going on right here. By the way, I noticed you said herbs. Did you pick that up from me? I, I guess so. I didn't even I didn't even notice it. I didn't even notice it. You said herbs, cause <laughs> cause it got an H in it. <laughs> a lot of people say herb because they heard it say herb. The Herb Society of America says either either is correct, and the only way you're wrong uh, is to correct somebody else. But herb is how they say it in French. Herb is how they say it in English. I don't know how they say it in German. I don't know. But it's not going to be one of those. It might be yarb. I don't know. And uh, we're going to talk about gardening right up until the end of the hour. Uh, did there was something I was supposed to talk about last week that I I, I forgot what it was that I was going to be talking about. Something that came up in 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 Clarksdale. Yeah. Anyway, we'll it, we'll think about it. I do have a, a, an heirloom. I brought in this piece. Did you ever get a knife? We did. We we're going to cut it up um, when uh, when we get to our cheesy tune. Oh, okay, okay. Well, well, uh, I brought in my my native plant of the week is a magnolia, magnolia grandiflora. It's our state tree and our state flower. This is called Little Jim. It'll fit on a salad bowl. It's a small thing. The leaves are much smaller than my hand. It's tidy. It's a big bush, not a small tree. But Little Jim magnolia is the longest blooming magnolia that you can have. It blooms from from March and April all the way up to October. It fits like a shrub, Little Jim Magnolia. The edible I brought in was some different kind of basil. I got regular sweet basil. I've got African blue basil, which is the best butterfly and hummingbird plant. And I've got uh, purple, purple ruffles basil. But a lot of people don't think of basil as a flower. If you got a flower bed, put basil in it. It doesn't have to be grown in a herb garden. Uh, it's a pretty plant, got good foliage. And if you feel like eating it, you can. But basil is an excellent full sun or part shade summer annual. Lots of different kinds out there. And just because it's a herb doesn't mean you have to use it as a herb. Matter of fact, it ain't a herb unless you use it. Java is a stupid thing, but a bicycle is not transportation till you get on it and ride. Well, basil is not a herb unless you cook with it. It's just a pretty plant otherwise. We often overlook that kind of thing. So, Java, what do you think? Indian cling peas. That's been grown since the 1600s in southeast United States. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's a nice, it's not as sweet, but it, it has great flavor. Great and flavor. It, you know, and it's not that kind of had juice run down your face. It's more of a cooking. You know, they have cooking pears and slices of cooking apples. Sli- <clears throat> anyway, it's one of those. I was but, just about to say that. It would be probably perfect to cook with. And uh, what, what, what my grandmother used to do is she would stick cloves in it and she would pickle them. Mm. And save them for like Thanksgiving and stuff like that. But anyway, Indian cling is an old variety. It was introduced by the Spaniards into Mexico, and it was almost immediately moved its way north from Native Americans. They would grow it, they say, because it grows from seed. And and it pollinates by itself. Anyway, by the time uh, English made it to, to New England, it was already grown because it had been spread so quickly by Native Americans. That's the reason it's called Indian cling. So anyway, just an oddball thing there. Um, I w- want to do a couple of things, but let's, let's take care of business first. Let's, let's talk to folks who, who are calling in. We're going to start in Hernando with Mike. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Uh, good morning, Bubba Felder. I heard you call yourself that the other week. And it's got <laughs> me laughing out I'm looking like a Bubba. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, a little levity. You're talking about uh, H-E-R-B and E-R-B in the, in, the, in the pronunciation of the word. Yeah. You'll love this. I was in television for 20 years, and we had a, a production guy whose name was Herb, and he insisted that we call him Herb, <laughs> <laughs> and we finally figured it out. I said, "What? that's not how your name is spelled. He said, that's pronunciation. Yeah. So I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Yeah, and, you know, he's just being a jerk about it. 
yeah, he was he, he was a comedian. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we have well, I, I'll, I'll never stop forget calling you Bubba. That was my favorite. Bubba. You know, uh, you, know when, you know when I look like you know, I, I I swim twice a week at a at a, a, a at a pool at, at associated with the hospital nearby, and I walk there and I I wear jeans and old black t shirts. I got scraggly hair. I've got what looks like a backpack, but it's really a man perch with my swimming trunks and stuff. Anyway, lady, I was there one time and she wrecked she, after a couple of months. She said, "Felder, I just got I just recognized you for months." I didn't know who you were. I thought you were just a homeless guy who had worked his way into the pool somehow. So a bubble, and you know, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So anyway, I, I hope so. I hope so because I've seen your picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your call, man. Thank you. All right, now we're gonna go to Joe or Homer. We got a Joe. Joe. He, Joe. Go. Joe down in the kill. There we what's, go. What's up, Joe? Down on the coast. Hey, well, real quick, I want to thank you for taking the call, first of all. Sure. And it's just a real quick question that I have for you. I'm getting ready to plant some uh, butterfly ginger, and my wife and I were talking, and we do a lot of um, cooking of curry. Yeah. I'm wondering if that rhizome is edible as a ginger. It is, but if you like really curry, are you a, are you a heat person? Are you a vindaloo or just a madras hot or what? No, no, I, I'm a, I'm a really heat hot person. My okay. wife is not though, so she's okay. kind of well, mossed, she, well so. she will like it. The the ginger the 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 butterfly ginger sometimes called ginger lily. The Latin name is hedicium. Starts with H E D hedicium. Uh, it's perfectly edible, but it's mild. It's not zesty like like uh, the zinzibur type of ginger. But that whole group, there's a whole group of them that are perfectly edible. There's one called curcuma. Um, and there's some kind of herb. What is that herb that everybody always talking about eating that's good for for, for their health? Uh, uh, cumin? Uh, I yeah. don't know. Um, uh, no, not turmeric. Not, yeah, turmeric, turmeric, and uh, and curcuma and uh, ginger, butterfly ginger. They're all gingers, and you can eat them, but uh, they're just not zesty like the real ginger. Great. Well, I thank you so much. You ended a question for us, so I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, there's a fellow over, uh, not far from you, there's a fellow over in Louisiana who specializes in lots of different kinds. they got incredible flowers. So, you know, grow them also because they're pretty. Well, that's the, that's the second reason I'm growing them, because they're pretty, they're pretty, they smell fragrant, and it was uh, killing two birds at once. Now, we usually have just a uh, spice garden, yeah, but you yeah. wanted flowers this year, so I'm trying to do both. Well, this is this is, Deacon, this is one that will also grow in wet soil, so if you got a kind of low-wet area, it's a really good one for there, well, we're too. Definitely swamp- yeah, we're definitely swampy down here by the coast, so. All righty, man. Yeah. Well, t- tell her I said, hey, Joe, y'all have fun. Hey, call us, l- 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 let us know how both you and she uh, perceive how it tastes. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you, and I will do that. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now, um, there's an arrow in here. I'm not sure. Java, somebody's messing with me on the screen. There's arrows moving around on the screen, and I'm not touching anything. But one's pointing to Biloxi, but there's one on the lion. Which one do we go to? Yeah, let's go to uh, go to our friend Homer because he Homer. he is up next. I got a big old hug from Homer from up in Lyon. Clarksdale is, in case you're not sure, Clarksdale is a suburb of Lyon, Mississippi. Morning, Homer. How are hey. you? That's it. Hey, fella. How you doing? Good. Y'all? Good to see you. What's up, man? Um, Oakville. I asked you about Oakville last year. Uh, I planted a couple of rows of it, and it's just amazing the production on this stuff. I had no clue. Um, is it is it any type of fertilizer or anything? I'm getting as soon as the ground dry out. I was trying to get it in the ground before we get this big rain. But. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things. And, yeah. First of all, okra is is one of those those rare plants. It's it's from Africa. It likes hot, miserable, dry horrible conditions so it doesn't really need a lot if you give it too much fertilizer you get the prettiest stems you climb the stems you won't get as many flowers or, or the little fr- the seed pods so uh, fertilize it very lightly just a little bit of fertilizer get them started and uh, and they'll do fine uh, what what variety are you growing do you know yet no i buy it down in miss dale i mean it's, yeah it's uh miss dale still call uh, it miss dale's <laughs> yeah yeah and, and another thing I want to ask you about seeds. Now, I bought some seeds, green seeds, last fall last year. 
Uh-huh. And I actually picked the ground up, caught it where I could break the ground. I just, you know, saw time out. I, but I don't know. The seeds didn't come up well. I don't know whether it was the weather. The, the, the seeds get a little too old sometimes. So that's the well, they they, uh, they can, but now what what kind of seed? Was this was still talking about okra? Well, greens. Greens. Okay, well, yeah. Greens. Yeah. Greens, yeah. Like, you know, see, green seeds, lettuces and mustards and turnips and all like that, they're really, really small. And, 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 and if it gets a hard rain or if it rains and they start to sprout, then it turns dry. They start sending that little tiny root out of the seed, and if it turns dry, it can die. See, so with small seeded stuff like, like greens, you need to be able to just lightly wet them down every day or so. Just, just, just wet it down so those seeds get started and they don't dry out before they have a chance to get their root down in the dirt. So, you know, that, that, that helps a lot. You know, just getting them started and then getting them down in the, into the ground and they can take it from there. Okay. Okay. I got a few that came up, but they just. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I just had greens everywhere, but same thing this year. It, up, but it was pro- probably just, you know, bad combination of weather. You know, they're tiny little seeds. you got to sort of baby them. Hey, let me give you a real quick tip about okra. This is something, and, and I don't even eat okra. I don't like okra unless you fry it, put a lot of ketchup on it. But I love growing it because it is a beautiful member of the hibiscus family. There's a variety called burgundy that's got the leaves are, are almost red. The, the pods are burgundy. They turn green when you cook them. But here's a trick on, on, on planting okra. Soak the seeds for five minutes in plain old Clorox, plain old chlorine bleach. Soak them for five minutes, rinse them two or three times, set them aside, and within two days they've cracked open. You can drop them right where you want them. They'll come right up. Five minutes in chlorine bleach. Not, yeah, this is something yes, a, a, an old timer taught me this, and it works like it. They're going to sprout so fast that you don't need to do it today because they're going to sprout before you can get back out in the garden. But it 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 just straight Clorox, not dilute. Just just straight Clorox, you know. It doesn't take much. Just put them in this, swirl around, soak it for five minutes, rinse them, and then you know put them in just a little water so they you know so they don't dry out. But they'll they'll be cracked open in in uh, a, a day and a half, ready to go. Okay, appreciate it. They do take a while to come up. If you just plant them straight. I'll do that. All righty, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Good good good, good to see you last week. Thank you. Good to meet you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Take care. Bye. Yeah, Homer was Homer was a bit of a star. He uh, was. He was. He showed <laughs> up. Everybody want to talk to Homer. <laughs> uh, by the way, okra. Have you, uh, okra. Java. Have you ever heard about switching okra? Have we talked about that before? Is that where you you kind of hit it a little bit? Take a stick to yeah. it. Yeah. And the, the, you beat it up a little bit, and it stimulates more flowers and more pods. Crazy, crazy thing. Uh, so still stay, taking calls, right? Yeah, let's go up to um, to Gulfport. I think it's uh, Shelly. Shelly, good morning. We've gone from way up there to way down there. What's going on today? Uh, a couple of questions. I have got amarilla bulbs in some raised flower beds. Mm-hmm. Pretty ones. And I'm not doing something right because probably out of 25 uh, bulbs, I had five that bloomed. And I've got, I've got green leaves. But no blooms. Yeah, are these all? Are these fancy kinds, or they that red one that, that that I grow? I have some of all of them. I have like red, solid red. Uh-huh. I have some like with the red stripe. Right. Well, the reason I'm asking because a lot of hybrid plants are kind of fussy. You know, the ones you see around old home sites. You know, that's the ones you can count on. But when you start getting into different varieties and bigger flowers and fancier stuff, they get a little bit more. Uh, picky about stuff, and you know they may sulk a little bit more. Also, amaryllis is one of the few bulbs that really it, it really likes a, not necessarily wet soil, but they can take wet soil. And it might be that yours is just drying out too quick in that raised bed. Uh, and that's just an educated guess, but you know I grow mine in just plain old dirt, plain old clay, and they about half of mine bloom. So uh, I think it might just be uh, it, some of your hybrids might not be blooming as well. Uh, but also, is, if you're giving just a tiny bit of fertilizer, not much, just a little fertilizer, and uh, water them, if we go two or three weeks without a good rain, give them a good soaking, that'll help them form their bigger bulbs and flower buds for next year. 
What type of fertilizer? Any kind. I, I, I would for gardens. I never recommend agriculture for triple thirteen, triple eight. I don't recommend those in the garden because they're harsh and they're strong and they're temporary. But any stuff that they sell for flowers, any kind of flowering, shrub flu, vegetable flu, food, it's all the same stuff. But use something that's got a nice, long, slow, gentle feeding, like they sell for flowers or vegetables. Okay. Now, the other question I have is with the cold weather that we had this year. My Indian hawthorns, which are hedges across the front of the house, mm-hmm. just like the the front side of the plant, right? Looks like, looks like the cold got it. Yeah, it killed a lot of them up in North Mississippi. The the plant itself is not dead, but the front, kind of the top and the front, are. Do I need to just like? Cut it out, it's going to look like somebody took a bite out of it. It, it will, but, you know, you've seen people cut shrubs way, way back. It's called rejuvenation. Sometimes you take a big shrub and just cut it back to a foot tall and it sprouts back out again. That's an old horticulture practice called rejuvenation pruning and they sprout out stronger than ever, really fast. And then new growth, because the roots are intact, the top yeah. part really grows fast. So if you want to cut them back pretty far and when the new growth comes out, if you'll snip the tips off the new growth, then instead of shooting up long and tall, it'll branch out. So rejuvenation pruning, pruning harder than you really want, and then tip pruning the new growth, and it'll fill out quicker than you can imagine. And by the way, uh, we had a bay tree, you know, old bay laurel that you cook with at the Ag Museum in Jackson, planted back in the 80s. Okay, we're talking about a long time ago. It got killed completely to the ground by this freeze. I cut it down, and it's already got uh, shoots that are uh, more than a foot tall coming up from the ground. So don't be afraid to cut it. Your neighbors will understand. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Good luck on the amaryllis. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bye-bye. All righty. Now let's slide to Holly Branch. Bob, not sure where Holly Branch is. It's Bob. This is Bob. Yeah. But where's Holly Branch? Oh, it's Olive Branch. Olive, Olive Branch. Branch. Okay. Okay. Our our phone greeter misunderstood you. That's okay. <laughs> what's what's uh, up? My, my question was, I have noticed that uh, I have lost some shrubs. This, that we're looking good in the fall, but uh-huh. it's spring and in North Mississippi, I've noticed a lot of shrubs in the other locations uh, we've, we've just lost them. They just dried up and died, I yeah. guess. I didn't know if you had uh, had anybody say anything about that or if y'all have I, know anything about that, what happened. But I don't even have to ask anybody. It happened in my yard, too. I lost some plants. I lost an 80-year-old shrub in front of my house to the freeze. And it was two things. It was an early hard freeze, early before plants had a chance to, to settle down for winter. So it caught plants a little too tender back in December. And then when they started putting out new growth, uh, we had a late freeze that was normal, but there was too much new growth. So it's a one-two punch. This has happened all over the South, but particularly, I mean, even on the coast, we've had some plants damaged by that winter. All you can do is to prune and hope to put out some new growth. That's it. That's all I can do. Okay. Uh, well, that answers my question, man. Thank well, well, you. Let, let me give you something you could do, though. Go out with a with a pocket knife or a, a kitchen knife or something and barely scrape on the bark. Just scrape a little bit of the bark off, and if it's bright green right under the bark, it's alive. If it's brown beneath the bark, keep scraping. Practice on some plants that look okay so you can see where that green is. If it's not bright green under the bark, that part's dead. You need to cut down below there. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. We never got around to the question nobody asked. Yeah, because this show has been like a breeze, a well, lightning lightning rush. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saving it for next week, but it's a question nobody asks, and I got the answer. So okay. we're, we're going to do that next week, <laughs> do that next week. And we got this new app thing. What's the, what's the app? Yeah, what, come on, John. I'm an MP, old guy. The MPB Public Media app, a lot of people already have it on your phone, but we have a brand new feature. It's called Talk to Us. So you just open up the app in the menu bar. Um, you click the feature that says talk to us and they could do it right now and send a voice note, a picture or even a video to 
the Gustav Gardner. Like is right gonna, now. Is it come to my phone? No, it's not going to come oh, to your phone. Because I figure say, I think say I might have to slurp down this beer real quick and answer that question. <laughs> no, it's not going to come to your phone. It comes to our email. Okay. But it is a great, a great so new app. How do you a great get new it? Feature. How do you get it? It's inside the MPB Public Media app. So okay. I so don't download even know. the app, and you have the feature, and gotcha. just. Talk to us. Well, I'll, somebody give it a try. I want to see if this works. You young people and all your gadgets and stuff. Horticulture's fell to rushing, and it looks like we got Fletch on the road and Fletch and Alligator. Which uh, Fletch and Alligator's gone? I bet he's on the road in Alligator, Mississippi, which is along Tell the. It. Hey, Fletch, is this you, Fletch? Yes, sir. Were you calling from Alligator, Mississippi? On the road between Clarksdale and Cleveland. Yeah, man, that's that's rural, Alligator, Mississippi. What's going on this morning? So, question: the centipede food that you recommended said um, water it in afterwards. Yeah, they just say I'll that. Wait till this rain, what that? Yeah, they, they just say that. You know, they they can't just leave blanks. But they got to put all sorts of stuff that most people figure out. And it's not that big a deal. The main thing is just get it off the leaves so it doesn't burn a hole in the leaf on its way to the roots. Okay. But okay. It's, it's so not that if, big a deal. If I put it on, if I put it on when it's damp, damp tomorrow. No problem with that. It'd be it'd be better if you could wash it off the leaves. You know, fertilizer. You know, it, it's it's safe and all, but some of the ingredients in there can can te- if they stick to a leaf. You know, leaf is kind of tender. You know, it can make a little burn spot, but then it'll drop on down the ground. So you know, it's not that big a deal. But if you could water it in, just just wash it off the leaves, it'll start growing quicker too. Okay, I thought the wash part was activating the fertilizer. Really, it's just cleaning it off the leaves. Yeah, and, and both of them. You know, it's just it's, okay. just it's just like anything else. You know, if you're working around a a, a, a saw or something, you got to brush the the sawdust off you every now and then. That's the idea, and then take a shower later. Good deal. Thank you, sir. Take care. <laughs> Appreciate it, Fletch. Thank you. All righty. I don't know where that came from. Oh, I know where it was. I had to repair a hole in my roof. And I had to pull the ceiling down and pull the, the 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 insulation down to find out where the leak was from. And I mean, I got insulation and solder all over me. It was great because you know these guys said I looked like a bubba. I mean, Java, I looked like a bubba. And I had on a ball cap and I was covered with sawdust. Just a day's work, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I, f- I felt I felt kind of good. Felt kind of good about it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, folks, right now. It's time to plant stuff. The weather's kind of weird, but um, one of the things I'd encourage you, if you're new to gardening and you're not sure where to start, it's like eating an elephant. You don't have to do the whole thing. Take it a bite at a time. The trick is start at the right end because <laughs> you don't know where you're going to end up. But when it comes to gardening, the easiest thing anybody can do is get a big pot, one you can barely put your arms around. You don't even have to fill it up with potting soil. You can put an upside-down plastic pot in the bottom. And uh, yeah, and, and then just, just plant just some herbs. Plant just some cooling herbs. You don't have to eat them. They'll look good and it'll make you feel good. Let's slide down to Gulfport now and see what Bob is up to. Bob, good morning. Hey, Felder. Uh, I love your show. I'm the Bob Rose um, tailgate art for you. Okay. Okay. Well, wait. Wait. wait re- remind me. I'm just. I, I got my bifocus on. I don't know what we're talking about. I, well, uh, I grew um, uh, moss on my. Tailgate. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You grew moss on your tailgate. <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> How's it doing? Oh, it's, oh, it's doing good. Um, but I called about the crepe myrtle problem that people seem to be having. Yeah. Uh, and it, I became aware of this about four or five years ago. And in the 1960s, the late 60s, before I went in the Navy, um, I was visiting my grandparents in West Point, Mississippi, and I just happened on a, a, a set of Encyclopedia of Gardening. Yeah. It was very old, and the old man that was selling it apparently got out of the business. Yeah. I looked in there, and there was a recipe for painting the bark of these trees with a combination of pickling lime, yeah. lard, and a couple other things. Yeah, I, I'm real familiar. With it. And unfortunately, that won't work on this particular scale. This, this, this. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I did though. Okay, keep in mind we're I starting did, to run out of time, so make it quick. I'll be real quick. I took the pickling lime, mixed some diatomaceous earth with it, painted the bark on the the. Uh, 
great myrtles, and it killed everything other than the tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're, we're out of time. And this works for things that crawl up the trunk, but that's not how the scale. The scale can get on it from up above that. That's the problem. That's the problem. So treating the trunk is, is fine for some things, but not, not for things that, that come in from thin air. But anyway, it's a, good, it's a good tip, and I appreciate that. So, uh, Java, I guess we're about out of time, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Like I said, this has been a whirlwind, man. Uh, we were out in Clarksdale last week, which doesn't feel like a week. <laughs> and now we're back in the studio, and yeah. this hour went, came and went. Yeah. Now, I, I can't remember the whole name of it, but you know the blues thing that we have here on MPB with Scott Beretta? Yeah, Highway 61. Highway 61. Well, I had a chance to chat with the Scott and I, uh, sort of kicking some. Oh, we, we were knocking around ideas over homemade Clarksdale Brew root beer. <laughs> and uh, he has sent me some tunes that are blues related that if I can figure out how to download them and edit them, we can put them on this program. But Scott, I appreciate that. Uh, between the blues and food on Deep South Dining and gardening, we got all three of the main things that connect people together. Food, blue, food, music, and gardening. And I'm glad to be part of that trio here on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Java, it's good to see you, man. We need to get on the road. We're going to figure out some weird place to go. <laughs> All righty. Well, until then, folks, uh, if you get a chance, go to a farmer's market, go to a garden center, take a kid with you or a neighbor who can't drive, and help them pick out a pot and put some culinary herbs, a couple of flowers, Anything that grows, and you don't have to have much space. I grow stuff in the back of a pickup truck. So anyway, the main thing is get out and do what we all do best, folks, and that's get dirty. We'll see you all next week. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.